I'm Sandy Reese, Chief Encouragement Officer here at Get Fully Funded, where we help small nonprofits learn how to raise the money they need to fully fund their mission. I'm here to help you learn how to master the art and science of fundraising. And I've got a great tip for you in just a moment. But before we get to that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that the next time we post a really great tip like this one, you're among the first to know. Okay, on to this week's tip. So you've started a nonprofit or you've taken over the reins and it's exciting. You know you want to change lives and make a difference in the world, and yet there's so much to do. Who knew that you would have to have or master so many skills to grow your organization? And if you're like most, you don't have within yourself the full scope of skills that you need. And on top of that, it's just you. It's you, yourself, and you trying to get things done. Okay, all joking aside, it is hard to grow a nonprofit when it's only you. When you're a team of one, how do you get things done? Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips to help you with this, but the first thing I wanna tell you is that being a team of one is not a long-term solution. This is okay for now. When you're just getting started, it's okay if it's just you. You cannot keep this up long-term. It will significantly limit the ability that you have to make a difference in the world because you can only do so much as one person. This is what I figured out when I started my organization was initially it was fine, but there came a point really fast that I could not answer the phone, answer the email, talk to people, deliver services, do the marketing, find more help. Like I could not do all the things. I hope you're nodding. You know what I'm talking about. There's just not enough hours in the day. So, I want to share with you a couple of things that I've figured out a hard way over the years that have really, really helped, and hopefully this will help you too. Okay, the first is systems. Now, this, I'm going to be really honest, this took me a minute to wrap my head around the first time somebody said to me, you need a system. And once they explained it, I went, oh, I do that all the time anyway. So here's what a system is. It's a method of doing things that you follow every time you do the thing. Okay, so let's say that, um, well, how about cleaning your office? <laughs> you may laugh at that. I mean, that's one of the things that falls at the bottom of the priority list around here, but there's probably a way that you do that or a way that you get the trash out or a way that you buy office supplies. And it's easier for you in the long run if you develop habits and systems around how you do those things. So for example, if you need something, like let's say you need toner for your printer, stopping in the middle of the day to get in your car and run to Office Max, buy the printer and come back, not a great use of your time. Number one, anytime you're interrupting yourself during the middle of the day when you need to really be focusing on services or growing your organization, making connections, like there's so many other things you need to do other than getting in your car and going someplace. So you need to find a different way to do that. I recommend that you hold those kind of errand things for the next time you're gonna be over close to the store anyway, and then just swing in and get it. Or better yet, we do this a lot around here, order it online and have it shipped. Uh, that takes way less time, it's way easier. I know if you're like me, I love going to the office supply store. I'm like a kid in a candy store looking at all the post-it notes and the pens and the highlighters. If that's you, please feel free to type in and say, that's me too. I get it, that's me. Um, However, I have way more important things to do to grow my organization rather than, you know, tiptoeing down the, <laughs> the office supply aisle at the store. Okay, so systems. Develop systems for how you do things. One of the first systems that I realized that I needed was handling volunteer inquiries. I would have people call, and at first it was not a big deal. The first person called, I answered the phone. They said, oh, I would love to come and volunteer. I said, great. What were you thinking about? What kind of thing would you like to do? They said, oh, I don't really know. What do you have? Did okay, so it was a long conversation. It took forever. I got off the phone. I went and found a few things. I mailed them to this person and said, you know, when you choose what you want, let me know, blah, blah, blah. Well, that probably took me an hour out of my day by the time I had this conversation, and I found all this stuff and got it in the mail and all that. Then a couple of weeks later, somebody else called and said, oh, I'd love to come volunteer. You know, what, what kind of opportunities do you have? Okay, so I, I'm making it up from scratch again, having this conversation, get off the phone. I got to go around the office and find various things and mail it out. Again, 
hour out of my day. A couple weeks later, I get another phone call and something in my head went, wait a minute, wait a minute. After the third call, there was something in my brain that said, find a way to make this easier. Find a way. So what I did, and I didn't know it at the time that I was creating a system, but what I did is I took a piece of paper and I said, okay, the next time somebody calls and wants to know about volunteering, I need to have a list of opportunities ready to share with them. I think I'll make that now. <laughs> so I typed up a list of things people could do and I had that ready. And then I said, you know what would probably be really a good idea is if I had a volunteer application that I could send somebody and they could let me know what kinds of things they were interested in, what their experience was, what their availability is, all that kind of stuff. Because then I could just say, you know what, let me send you some stuff. You can fill out the application, send it back to me. Nowadays, you can do all this online. You can totally automate it. Like uh, we actually just set this up for a client not long ago where somebody wants to volunteer. They go to the website, they fill out the form. It automatically shoots an email to the volunteer coordinator and they take it from there. So it's all automated. Back then, I didn't have that. I'm dating myself. I know. Um, so what I did is I made a list of opportunities. I made the volunteer um, application. And then I said, okay, if when somebody sends me back this application, here's what I'm going to do next. And here are the other pieces that I'm going to send with this. And I set up a set of stacking trays in my workroom. I was very lucky to have a workroom that had like the printer and the copier and some cabinets where I kept extra paper and letterhead and all that. So I set up some stacking trays with the stuff that I was going to need for volunteers. So the next time somebody called, I just whipped out my list and I said, great. And I just kind of went down the list with the person on the phone, got their information that I needed, went into the workroom, bang, 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 bang. And that only took me 15 minutes instead of an hour. And the more I did it, the more I found ways to streamline it. And all of a sudden I had a system. And this became our way of doing it, our way of handling a volunteer inquiry. When you are a team of one, shaving off 45 minutes out of your day that you can use to work on something else that really needs your attention, that's a game changer. And that will change the game for you. So what I would encourage you to do is look around at anything that you do really often, like literally if you do it more than twice in a week, you need a, a system. Document your systems. In other words, write down what the system is. You can, you can say, here's the, the goal of the system. I want to be able to accomplish this or this, or I want to make sure that volunteers get information in a timely fashion. I want to make sure that whatever it is, document it step by step. So step one, we do this. Step two, we do that. Step three, we do the other thing. As if you were going to use this documentation to train somebody. And the truth is, one day you might. You might just use that to train a volunteer in, here's the way we do this. It makes it really easy when you have things documented to bring in a volunteer and say, you know what, I don't need to do this anymore. I don't need to be the one who's handling these volunteer inqu inquiries. I could get a volunteer to handle the other volunteer inquiries. You really can, you can do that sort of thing. Every time you can put one of those systems in place and that gets stuff off of your plate. And if you're like me, and you're kind of a control freak or you just like knowing that things are done to a certain standard, I don't know there's a lot of people out there like that, putting those systems in place is really going to help because you're not leaving it up to a whim. It's not willy-nilly. It's done in a very specific way, step one, step two, step three, that you laid out and the standards are very clear. So the more systems you can put in place, the better all of this is. You probably have some systems that are already in place. So for example, if on your website there is a donate button that goes to a form where somebody fills that out and it automatically downloads into your donor tracking software and it automatically kicks out a thank you receipt, that's a system. You may want to test it. Well, as we're coming into fundraising season, make sure that it's working. Make sure that the thank you is really warm. Make sure there's a thank you page in there so that immediately after they donate, it goes right to that. You want to look at your systems periodically and make sure they're still working, that you're still getting the result that you want from the system. So I highly recommend if you are a team of one and you need to grow, you need to get more things done, you need to really have a hard look at how you do things and start to systematize everything you can. Automate everything you can. So again, for example, like, the, um, the story I was talking about with the client, with the website, if there's a way for you to put that on the website so somebody can go there, find out what the volunteer opportunities are, fill out an application, like just handle that all online and then you don't even have to do it. So much better to do that rather than 
somebody calling you and interrupting your day. Not that a volunteer is interruptive, but there are ways to get things done without it taking your personal time and attention to get them done. And this is how you grow out of being a team of one. You put systems in place and then you get help to make sure that the systems get implemented. Help can look like a lot of different things. Help can be a volunteer who comes in a couple of hours a week. It could be an intern that gives you a couple of hours a week. I've had some great success with interns over the year, over the years. It could be a part-time staff person that you pay five hours a week to come and help get a few things done. It could be a lot of different things, and that's going to depend on your situation and your budget and what you want, what you can afford, but start thinking about it one at a time. If you put out a call for volunteers and you're not specific about what you're going to need, you're going to be overwhelmed really fast because you're going to have a lot of people that want to help, but they don't have any clue what you need. And you probably don't have any clue what you need either. It's a recipe for disaster. So be very clear about what you need. Put the system in place. And then think about as if you were hiring somebody to come in and work that system. What skills do you need, abilities, talents, experience, etc.? And then go recruit a volunteer who has that that can bring it to the table. Set some really clear expectations with that volunteer that you want them to be able to handle this for the next six weeks or until the end of the year or whatever. People like knowing what they're saying yes to. They want to know what the time commitment is, what you expect of them. Do you need them there every week? Is it, is it just once a month? Like, what is this going to look like? So be very clear with people. That's how you get really good volunteers and you create a situation where it's going to work for you. It's going to work for the volunteer. They're going to be super happy. Put one in place and then go on to the next. Put the next thing in place, the next system, and get a volunteer. And then get another system and a volunteer. Get another system. And before long, you're going to have all kinds of stuff in place. And several people who are supporting you, pulling together, all of a sudden you're not a team of one anymore. It's not I, it's we. And those volunteers are probably going to be really excited to help you. And they're probably going to feel pretty loyal to the cause. So start with systems, then get volunteers, and that's how you're going to grow. There's a whole article on our blog over at GetFullyFunded.com that's going to talk to you about how to grow your nonprofit when you're a team of one. Go check that out because there's a whole lot of tips in it um, beyond just systems and getting help. All right. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.